working on this handmade, hand laid fiberglass RC boat. This will be the second part of a three part series. First part, rudder and water pickup installation. The second part will be motor and ESC placement and install. We will go into battery placement, hole and motor size options, hole and ESC size options, kind of touch base about water cooling and how important propeller selection is on an RC boat. The final part will be on the water testing and tuning all the kinks out of this handmade, hand laid fiberglass RC boat. So for any boat build, you've got to pick out your power system. You can, you can go brushed, you can go brushless, or you can go nitro. For this particular build here, we're going brushless. Uh, when picking out your brushless ESC and motor combo, there's a few rules to live by. Uh, 27 inches total length of your boat up to 27 inches. Uh, I recommend up to 100 amp ESC. For boats greater than 27 inches, I would recommend 100 amp plus ESC. Now when you're picking your ESC out, you could choose a uh, low voltage system or high voltage systems. Uh, low voltage is up to 6S capable, like this Turner G Marine 70 amp 6S ESC. Um, for larger boats, you can choose the high voltage system like the Sea King 130, which is 8S lipos or greater. A lot of power being delivered with these high voltage systems, so something to consider when you're picking out your ESC. Now next, you want to make sure you get an ESC that has water cooling. This has water pickups and it has tubes running through the ESC that keeps it cool. Opposed to an ESC that has a built-in fan. Water pickups with water cooling. That's to help your brushless system run much cooler and efficient. Now we're going to get into the motor, motor choices. Uh, you want to choose a motor that's going to fit your boat. 20 to 30 inches total length you want to typically stay with a motor that's 36 millimeters 540 size uh, for boats 35 to 40 inches you need to pick out a motor in the 40 millimeter range like this hobby star and for boats greater than 40 inches you would pick typically pick out a motor that's 42 millimeters or above uh, you know the bigger the boat, the more weight. The more, the more, more power. The more batteries you put in it, the more weight you're putting in it. It's all things to consider when you're picking out your power system. Uh, also, you want to take in consideration what type of prop you're running—a two, a three blade, a lifter prop, uh, and so on. Um, with your motors, you also you have to run a water cooling jacket like this guy right here. They basically just slide right onto your motor uh, and water runs through this jacket on the outside of your can touching the can cooling your motor down um, that's very important you want to make sure you got plenty of water going through your system for the cooling have a little better understanding of what size motor and esc to use for your boat build we're going to start installing our turner g 3665 2600 kV motor into this fixed position motor mount. This is a handmade motor mount that I made out of a piece of aluminum, bent it to shape. Typically a fixed position motor mount like we have here is for a hard shaft. Now they work perfect for that, but I wouldn't recommend using this type of motor mount for say a flex cable all right now that we have our brushless motor installed onto the motor bed we have the water jacket on and we have our head screws tightened up and loctited in place now it's time to attach the motor to its drive shaft and the way we're going to do that is what with what you call a collet now this collet it unscrews and you slide your shaft in and then you screw it down to tighten it up 
and hold it in place. And on the motor side, it uses a couple grub screws to tighten it down onto the flat spot on your brushless motor. Now that is the collet style coupler. Then you have an actual coupler itself. This has like say a five millimeter hole on one side and four millimeter on the other side. This is the most basic style coupler you can get and it's mostly used for hard shafts. With that being said, we're gonna slide our shaft and call it onto the motor shaft. Line up your two grub screws with the flat spot. It went right into place without forcing it uh, whatsoever. Now you don't wanna run your collet all the way up on your motor. You want it to be free and not hitting anything uh, once it, it is installed. We went with a Turner G Marine 70 amp 6S capable 5 volt BEC brushless ESC. This has built in water cooling. Uh, as you can see here, it has the, the, the fittings on, on both sides to run your water through the ESC. Uh, you have your intake side and then you just attach your silicone tube to the out, outlet side and that's going to send water all the way through your ESC. Uh, we're running a dual pickup on this boat, as you guys seen in the first video. Uh, one will go to the brushless motor and the other to the ESC. You can also buy ESC mounting plates that you epoxy into the boat itself and tie strap your ESC down. But I'm going to go with the double sided tape. It works. Our wires hooked up correctly and we're just going to see what this thing sounds like when we have throttle going to the motor. So basically you want to listen. For any binding. See if there's any type of binding in your system. Another good way to, t to tell if you have uh, improper alignment is put your finger on your stuffing tube itself. And then throttle it up and feel if you have any heat in your stuffing tube, then more than likely your motor is out of alignment with the with your drive shaft itself. So it's a very important part and take your time with this aspect of your boat build. We're gonna test the boat while it's rigged out. It has the batteries, it has your ESC, and this is really something you need to do uh, when you're planning in the planning stages, when you're planning on, how, you know, where to put the motor, where to put your ESC, your batteries, all this needs to be done uh, ahead of time. So we've got everything rigged out in the boat. I'm gonna put the cowl on, and we're just gonna test the balance. And you want your weight, you want the the balance to be one third of the boat's length toward the stern. Basically one third the boat's length and just a little bit forward. So I think that that's gonna be perfect. You really, especially when you're running a hard shaft like we are to, in this boat, you really, really, really got to think about weight distribution. So we're gonna slide the drive dog on our shaft. We have a flat spot here and we're going to lock tight this thing into place for this hard shaft it's pretty simple you want to slide your drive dog on your shaft with the flat spot first like so go all the way to the flat spot tighten down your grub screw just kind of work it back and forth make sure you got it nice and tight make sure there's no loctite on your shaft when you put your propeller on so i'm using a 3 16 inch propeller and you can buy these little inserts that go right in to the propeller itself you see that 
can buy all the same size propeller and just run that little adapter shim in there. This propeller is balanced really good. The longer they spin, the better balance it is. Oh yeah. So now we have our drive dog, our propellers on. We can put our nut on. This is what holds it all in place. If it's rubbing on the stuffing tube, it's probably gonna make some heat and break your, sh your prop shaft in half. So you wanna make sure that that's not rubbing. That's done, that's done. Let's get the battery hooked up here and let's just see what this thing will do. I'm just gonna run it with the 2S battery for right now. I don't like putting big power on it whenever it's not in the water. So that, that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's get something so you can see. our silicone cooling tubes from the water pickups on the back of the boat to our ESC. I'm going to trim up a little bit of this tube. Run it to your ESC and to your motor. Once you have your intakes ran, you can run the tubes to the outlets. I like this silicone tube. You can also use like fuel line plus the silicone tubing doesn't kink. This is my outlet. These little these guys here. Now I wish I would have put them on the top side of my boat so you could see the water actually coming out of the hull itself. So we've got it all hooked up. I've got water coming in to my ESC and then going out of my ESC. And then with my from my rudder, it's coming in to the motor, around the can, and then out the back of the boat. Heat is your biggest nightmare on any brushless system, whether it's in a car or your boat, heat is the number one killer of brushless components. So make sure you've got this water cooling right and you've got the high flow that you need. So I guess we're gonna touch base a little bit about propeller selection for your boat build. You need to know three things before you buy a propeller. You got to know the diameter and size propeller you need for your boat. And second, you need to know the pitch, what pitch propeller you need. The pitch is the that angle right there of your propeller blades. And then third, you need to know the shaft size. What size shaft you'll be putting into your propeller. Once you know those three measurements, you can pick a propeller uh, best suited for your boat. Propeller selection can be a little tedious, y'all. And, and a larger propeller doesn't always mean it's the best option and can cause severe electronics damage. A smaller propeller with a greater pitch can often give you better top speeds than a larger propeller. You take the same size propeller, okay, and one with the greater pitch will often give you the best top end performance. 
the one with the lower pitch will reduce the top end but give you better takeoff speed and performance you got me so with greater pitch is top end the lower the pitch is low end it's kind of a give and take deal really two blade propellers uh, you, you've got to really fine tune and, and and try different propellers to see which one works best on your boat um, bigger isn't always better when it comes to propellers So you've got your electronics installed, your batteries are in, servo, rudder set up, your prop is on, you got your stuffing tube all greased up, everything's tight, lock tighted in place. The very last thing you want to do before you take it on the water is just set it in your bathtub. I've got a little jacuzzi here we're going to use and just check for leaks. Uh, I don't see any leaks on our boat thus far I've had this boat in the water for about 30 minutes now and I don't see any water spots you are basically gonna get water from your screws through the hole uh, your stuffing tube it will leak out the stuffing tube so you just want to make sure everything's tight and sealed up properly you don't want any excess water in the boat uh, while you're running and on the water it's not good for your electronics and it will sink your boat, trust me. Well, test your propulsion, the thrust. Make sure your propeller's not gonna come loose. Make sure your drive dog is tightened down all the way when you throttle your boat up. A lot of times your propeller and drive dog will become loose uh, over time, so you wanna make sure it's a tight fit. And doing so, you just wanna hold your boat in place, get your remote, your re and throttle it up so everything seemed to be fine if if we had any problems the, the the motor would spin up and your propeller would not spin so that's a that would be a telltale sign that your prop dog or propeller is loose on the shaft it looks good. Everything seems to be working fine. So the next step, out in the water, testing this boat out. So that's gonna wrap up this part of the RC boat setup. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Big B with Ironclad RC, a channel where we tinker, test, and tune everything RC. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to get notified for future builds and as always thank you guys for watching